I, say, I think the government have done some good stuff in this space, but they need to do an awful lot more. Um, uh, and that's going to be needed, you know, in a very short order. And we're talking months uh, to, to get people, um, you know, typically young, typically more disadvantaged, to a certain extent also more, uh, more typically from a, uh, a BAME background. But not, not exclusively, it's also older people as well, but getting those who have been impacted by this pandemic, those who have, have either got, uh, you know, lost a job or lost regular employment, getting them back into employment, creating the opportunities, it's going to come from uh, uh, apprentices because employers will need sort of incentives and encouragement to, to create the opportunities. So getting that moving uh, and I think apprenticeship is, is you know, one of uh, if not the key key way of doing that but um, uh, the more that can be impressed upon government we're doing our bit but the more voices that, that do that the better as I say they are doing some good stuff but more needs to be done and, and uh, as someone has mentioned that there's a there's a kickstart scheme uh, that the government's launched when it comes to uh, access to early talent uh, it, it, that they can roll into the branch uh, just one final question to yourself. Uh, when Steve was talking about the investment side of it, and obviously from a pre for uh, prospective apprentices, is there any key areas you think that the government needs to focus on? So, for example, you mentioned about travel and you know subsidising travel, and obviously in, in certain pocket areas of the country, there's a subsidy around uh, travel. But are there any uh, sort of key areas that, particularly when it comes through your research, that you found that these are some of the areas that could potentially impact an individual considering an apprenticeship when it comes to when they come from uh, socially disadvantaged backgrounds? Um, for me, um, I think what was really interesting is, you know, along the way of all of our research, I guess the difference in experience is quite vast. There are some apprentice apprentices who've believe that they've been really, really supported and that they've had a wealth of different training. And there were some apprentices who kind of felt like even though they had a fit in the door, they might have spent most of their time making cups of tea. So I think more needs to be done in, in terms of not just we're going to give employers money to bring apprentices in, but actually how are we going to support employers to ensure that they have enough support um, to train these young people effectively, um, to make sure that their experience is enriched. And of course, also, um, I believe that the government needs to do more in terms of ensuring more opportunities in these cold spots we spoke about earlier, so it's more accessible for um, disadvantaged people. Yeah, thanks, Jez. Uh, the points I would add, we've, we've talked about sort of in some areas, it's, it's transport links, uh, in some areas it's around uh, childcare uh, and, and uh, frankly affordable childcare um, uh, they're quite structural things but it's also around particularly about um, uh, advancing through the apprenticeship schemes uh, it's around making sure that there is much more adult education available so how you uh, I mean, what's quite interesting is the amount of um, learning and skills development that can be done for young adults or older adults that matter as they start to progress through apprenticeships, that tails off, particularly from more disadvantaged backgrounds, almost certainly because of the things we've just talked about, childcare, travel, et cetera, et cetera. Uh, but that's how you make sure that you get people through the apprenticeship levels into much uh, more sustainable employment, higher paid employment. So um, further education, adult education is a critical component that more needs to be done around there as well. <laughs> 